I'd much rather have a bunch of short videos than one long video. And I'm having to re-record this, just FYI. I know you don't need to know that, but um, because the previous version messed up for other reasons. But anyway, so the story that you heard in the previous one is what's basically the um, outline, more or less, for the hero's journey. And this was re recognized in 1949 by a guy named Joseph Campbell. In fact, there's, there's courses in college that go over this. One of the courses I took at Chapel Hill was the heroic journey. And so in that course, we read The Hobbit, we read all three of The Lord of the Rings, we read The Aeneid, we read The Odyssey, we read Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. I think those were all the books. There may be one more in there that I um, read. But, but it was all about the heroic journey. And it was from a literature perspective. It wasn't from a movie perspective. But he published a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, and it's called that because this hero appears again and again and again in slightly different versions. It describes a pattern of narrative that seems to appear over and over throughout drama. We can go back to Greek um, dramas and see this. Storytelling, myth, religious ritual. Go all the way back to Beowulf and the Epic of Gilgamesh, stories like that. You're dealing with the hero's journey. And so there's this archetype of the hero, and archetype just, just means that we have this one guy, archetype, trying to get my hands in the frame here, uh, archetype of the hero who goes out, usually on some sort of a journey, and accomplishes something great. It might be for himself, it may be for his tribe, his family, his group of people, his friend group, or something like that. It could be for his city, his town, it could be for his country, or even the whole world, you know, think of... Um, you know, Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games. You know, she's doing it for her district, but then eventually she's doing it for all of, um, what's the name of that country? Pandia, something like that. I cannot, um, Pan Am, something like that. That's, that's not it, but gosh, I, I can't think offhand. Anyway, um, there are several parts to the hero's journey. Uh, there are four parts to it, uh, and we're, we'll go through these pretty quickly here. So part one has five subparts. The hero, And again, think about movies you're familiar with. Think of where your move, the fa favorite movies, especially adventurous type movies, may be fitting into this. The hero's in an ordinary world. They get a call to adventure, and the hero refuses the call. They then meet a mentor. They finally go in and start the journey. In part two, they're now in this new world. It has four subparts. They leave their world, enter the new world. There's tests along this road. They probably meet some friends, some allies. They may be people that stick around with them for a while. They may be people just help them out along for the way. The hero must prepare for the upcoming challenges. Our hero seems to be ready, but then they hit bottom or some kind of drawback. They realize there's something that's not good enough about them yet that they need to work on in order for that to happen. Then we get to the third part, which has three subparts. The heroes test it again. The hero and allies achieve a goal. And then the hero, usually there's, there's, a, there's a climax and then there's some drawback where they get chased back. You know, something doesn't happen. So like for me in Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope, it would be they save Leia and they get her back with the Death Star plans. But now the Death Star now knows where they are because they tracked a homing device on the Millennium Falcon. You know, um, there's always sorts of things like that, like something, get, you know, they have to go back. You know, there's the moment, you know, yes, we did it. No, no, we didn't. You know, and, and that's kind of what you get, a give and take in a movie. Um, and we see that a lot in movies, especially, but you see it in stories, too. Uh, and then we have part four, the climax, four subparts. The hero confronts the enemy in a battle to the death. The hero is typically pushed to an extreme. They learn something that allows the hero to triumph. The hero receives a reward hero returns home. This could be literal. This could be metaphorically. Maybe they're not home, but they have found a place. Um, I think Disney's Hercules talks about, I can go the distance. I can find a place where I'm celebrated and loved. Um, usually with a new knowledge or appreciation. You know, and this is kind of weird because you get into stories like Harry Potter and you're like, wait a second, at the end of Harry Potter, he goes back to the Dursleys. I wouldn't call that home. But even though he physically goes back to that location, I think mentally, emotionally, in his heart, he is where he wants to be. He's got friends. He's got Ron and Hermione. He's got, he, he now knows he's part of something where he actually feels like he belongs. Um, so we see that with that. So you can see these diagrams here, and I took these from the Eastern Arizona College's um, website and we're not going to delve too deep into this in fact i'm gonna to try to keep this short but you know me i'm gonna go a little bit longer here so basically those 12 parts that we talked about you can see here in this first circle on the left uh ordinary world call to adventure adventure refusal of the call i don't know the refusal of the call is always there maybe 
there's usually a moment of disbelief. I, it's very rare that you ever see a story where a person's like, man, I'm ready to be a superhero, or I'm ready to be a hero, or I'm ready to be a wizard, or whatever it is that's going on with them. They meet a mentor, they cross the threshold, and they get into that special world. They have tests, allies, enemies, approach. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I always want the hero to spend way more time in the special world than in the ordinary world. Um, ordeal, death, and rebirth. Reward, they seize the sword. And again, it's a proverbial sword. It doesn't have to be a literal sword. The road back, resurrection, and return with elixir is what they use as a phrase at the um, Eastern Arizona College. But you could even, in, in English classes, you probably, if you've talked about this, you don't talk just about the physical stuff of what the characters are doing. You also talk about the inward stuff, the stuff that's going on inside of them. So like with Frodo and the One Ring, he's constantly fighting the will of the ring and the urge to put it on and things like that. You know, Harry Potter's trying to be a person that he wants to be and things like that. So we could... We we have not just the the out. Where's my mouse? There's my mouse. The, we won't we'll have just the outer journey, the thing that we can all see. We also have the inner journey, the thing that's going on inside the character. You see this a lot with stories, with books, where you can really read into the character's mind. In, in film and movies, you, we have to do it different ways. We have to do you know dream sequences or things like that. We have to look at the facial acting of the actor. We have to see things in order to really know this. And, and no stress, we're not going to go into this in a lot of detail. If you're really interested in this, there's a lot more that you can you know go into this and learn about this. But that's a little bit beyond the scope of this course. I just want you to be aware of this. This is just a screen grab of the Eastern Arizona College, and I recommend that you go here and look around if you're not familiar with this. And even if you are, it's worth looking and reviewing. But they go over the 12 part of the hero journey here, and they use the Lord of the Rings. I think specifically Fellowship of the Ring. Um, I don't remember looking at all of it, but they go into number one, the ordinary world. Number two, the call to adventure. You know, they go through the different steps and they show you how this story actually meets those different things. Um, it's, it's also a great graphic they have on here, too. It goes back and forth like a snake. Um, and they take six movies, and I forget what those six movies are offhand. Uh, Spider-Man is one of them. I think Harry Potter, Star Wars probably, um, maybe Guardians of the Galaxy or something like that. They take six movies, and they show you how they fit all the different 12 parts of the history. And I was going to put them in this pre uh, presentation, and talk through them myself because it just I really love that graphic, but it doesn't really fit right here. So we're just we're not going to we're not going to. But I would highly highly recommend that you go look at that. Just just go look at it for a few minutes and do stuff with it. I there's a good chance I'll give you an assignment of some sort dealing off of that. My mind's always working on these things because I want you to work with this material because when you work with the material you learn the material. If you just sit here and listen to me yammer on and on and on about this. It's not going to help. But here's why we're talking about this. So we're not, like I said, we're not going to stress about the hero's journey. We could, we could make this entire course the hero's journey. But what I do want to point out here is when you watch movies going forward, ask yourself, does this movie fit this paradigm? Many of them will. I've already listed nearly a dozen movies that fit this. A lot of them will have parts that fit the, um, and you know, to an extent, a movie has to fit part of it. But a lot of them, sometimes what you'll see is movies are like, okay, we know this paradigm exists. We know this archetype of the hero exists. How can we take it and twist it? How can we take it and manipulate it and give it, make it, take the old and make it new? And this is something that we as a society do in all sorts of ways. We do it in fashion. We do it in language. We do it in movies. We do it in music. This is why people remix songs, why people do covers of songs, why people take, you know, maybe um, the lot, the beat from one song and move it into another song. You know, we do this all the time. Um, a great example of this is in 1972, The Godfather, which granted is based off a book by Mario Puzo. Um, but in 1972, they came out with The Godfather and it's really the hero's journey, but it's an anti-hero's journey. So in this case, you're not following a guy who's a good guy. You're actually following kind of arguably the villain, but he's the person that you're kind of rooting for because, you know, the movie's named after him, The Godfather. You know, it is what it is. But when Joseph Campbell came up with this in the 40s, this concept of the hero with a thousand faces, the hero's journey. He was surprised that as you look at these stories over and over and over again throughout history, 
over centuries, over millennia, this archetypical story comes up again and again. That's why he calls it the monomyth, the one myth. It seems to be the one myth that we always have. And I just want you to be aware of this as you move forward and watch movies and watch stories throughout your life about this. I'm probably going to attach another video or two on here that are not by me, but where other people who have a little bit more expertise in the hero's journey go into this because I think it's worth your time and energy to look at. But I'll add those to the playlist and let you know. But I'll see you in the next section. We're going to talk a little bit more about story structure before we close this unit out. I'll see you there.